SpaceX's Dragon now dominates ISS cargo missions while every competitor hits critical failures. Boeing's Starliner just dropped from six missions to four after operational disasters. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus got damaged during transport, and internationally, China's Shenzhou-20 faces delays while Russia's main launch pad sits destroyed. What happens when NASA depends on just one company for space access? Dream Chaser just completed electromagnetic testing, tow tests, and telemetry demonstrations at Kennedy Space Center. But can it capitalize on this golden window before the ISS shuts down? Here's what just changed. NASA rewrote Dream Chaser's contract. Instead of seven guaranteed cargo missions, Sierra Space must now complete a free flight demonstration first. Only after proving success will NASA consider ordering actual resupply missions scheduled for late 2026. Most analysts called it a setback, but they missed something critical. While everyone focused on the delay, Sierra Space quietly achieved breakthrough progress at Kennedy Space Center. Dream Chaser completed electromagnetic interference and compatibility testing inside NASA's Space Systems Processing Facility, confirming the vehicle can operate reliably through brutal electromagnetic conditions during launch, orbit, and re-entry. The space plane also passed high-speed tow tests where a Freightliner truck dragged it across the runway at landing speeds, validating autonomous navigation systems that will guide touchdown at 200 miles per hour with no second chances. Then came real-time telemetry demonstrations with mission control in Louisville using NASA's satellite network, proving Dream Chaser maintains communication when it matters most. But passing ground tests means nothing if competitors are failing in actual operations. Boeing's Starliner tells that story perfectly. The spacecraft supposed to share crew missions with Dragon just got cut from six flights to four, with the first mission uncrewed and remaining flights conditional on meeting reliability thresholds. This wasn't a development delay. Starliner flew to the ISS and couldn't bring its astronauts home safely. Boeing had to leave Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams on station for eight months while Dragon rescued them. NASA's language shifted from commercial crew partner to if reliability meets acceptable thresholds. That's bureaucratic code for fundamental trust breakdown. How do you recover credibility after stranding astronauts in space? Dream Chaser faces delays too, but there's a critical difference. Sierra Space is delayed because they're still proving the design works through methodical testing. Boeing is delayed because they proved their design doesn't work during an actual mission. The contrast matters more than most people realize. Then Northrop Grumman's Cygnus got damaged during transportation before the NG-22 mission. They fixed it for NG-23, but the incident exposed vulnerabilities in a system NASA relied on for years as their stable cargo workhorse. Internationally, China's Shenzhou-20 hit operational problems causing delays while Russia's main launch pad at Vostokny suffered heavy damage, blocking near-term launches. Every major player except SpaceX is stumbling simultaneously. What does that create for the one company still executing flawlessly? A dangerous dependency. Dragon now handles the overwhelming majority of ISS traffic for both crew and cargo. SpaceX's execution is genuinely impressive, but NASA has a strategic problem. When one company controls 90% of your space access, you don't have a commercial program anymore. You have a monopoly with government dependency. Agencies need redundancy for cost competition and mission flexibility, especially as the ISS approaches its final operational years. This timing creates Dream Chaser's golden opportunity. NASA desperately needs a second viable system before the ISS timeline expires. Starliner can't fill that role after operational failures.
Cygnus showed vulnerability. International partners face their own crises. That leaves one credible option emerging from testing right now, the space plane at Kennedy Space Center passing every evaluation. But can Dream Chaser actually compete with Dragon's proven track record? Here's where design differences become strategic advantages. Dream Chaser Sierra Space is already positioning beyond NASA missions. The December 2025 acoustic testing will be followed by modifications in Colorado, specifically for national security applications. Military customers want responsive space access with rapid turnaround capabilities. A vehicle landing on runways at multiple sites fits that requirement perfectly. Commercial space stations will need servicing once Axiom and others become operational. Dream Chaser's versatility makes it viable across NASA, military, and commercial markets simultaneously. Few competitors can claim that operational range. But here's the brutal reality. Dream Chaser's biggest obstacle isn't technology. It's the rocket underneath. ULA's Vulcan Centaur is supposed to provide launches, but Vulcan needs its own certification missions first. Every time Vulcan becomes available, it gets used for certification flights or national security payloads that take priority. Dream Chaser keeps getting bumped from launch slots even when the space plane itself is ready. Sierra Space is trapped waiting on someone else's schedule, and this creates a vicious cycle. The longer Dream Chaser waits, the more ground it loses to Dragon's operational database. Dragon just completed its 50th cargo mission and 15th crew flight. That's reliability heritage Dream Chaser can't match without actually flying. NASA makes decisions based on flight data, not ground test results. The ISS has maybe five years left, possibly less. Dream Chaser's first two vehicles are cargo variants, meaning Sierra Space must develop and certify a crew-rated version fast enough to support final ISS missions. If the cargo demo slips to late 2026 and crew development takes another two years, you're looking at 2028 to 2029 for crewed flights. By then, the station might be preparing for deorbit. SpaceX isn't standing still either. Dragon Evolution brings upgraded capabilities while Starship development continues at scales Dream Chaser can't touch. The competitive benchmark keeps rising. Sierra Space must prove Dream Chaser works better than alternatives in specific mission profiles. Where's the undeniable advantage that makes NASA choose an unproven space plane over Dragon's track record? The answer comes down to one mission. Dream Chaser's free flight demonstration will be the most scrutinized space operation in years. Every sensor reading, every system metric, every landing parameter will determine whether this vehicle becomes NASA's critical second option or another promising program that couldn't deliver when it mattered. So where does this leave Dream Chaser? The space plane sits at Kennedy Space Center with successful tests while every competitor except SpaceX faces critical setbacks. Boeing's Starliner lost credibility after stranding astronauts. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus showed vulnerabilities. International programs hit roadblocks. NASA desperately needs a second reliable option before ISS operations end and Dream Chaser is the only viable candidate right now. But wanting success and achieving it are completely different. Dream Chaser must overcome Vulcan's scheduling conflicts, prove flawless performance during its late 2026 demo, and develop a crew variant fast enough to catch final ISS missions. One technical failure could turn this golden opportunity into another Starliner-level disaster. The margins are that tight. The irony is brutal. SpaceX created this opportunity by being too successful. Their monopoly forced NASA to seek alternatives. Now Dream Chaser must capitalize on competitor failures while avoiding the same mistakes. The free flight demonstration will be the most critical mission in years. Not for what it carries, but for what it proves about breaking single provider dependency. 
Will Dream Chaser seize this moment, or will delays waste the perfect window? Drop your prediction below. Subscribe to Atlas Space and hit notifications to track every milestone as Dream Chaser approaches its defining mission. In spaceflight, opportunity and risk always travel together. When SpaceX dismantled Booster 18 after its unfortunate end, engineers finally got to see what's been hidden inside the V3 Super Heavy. The side-mounted oxygen tank looks like something straight out of Alien, a bizarre spider structure branching in all directions toward the inner 13 engines. But why does SpaceX need this strange setup? Here's the real problem. During tower catch, most propellant is burned off. Without this spider tank staying full, those inner engines could starve for oxygen, right when precision matters most. So, how exactly does this brilliant design prevent catastrophic engine failure at the worst possible moment? The teardown of Booster 18 gave us an unprecedented look inside. What SpaceX revealed changes everything we thought we knew about propellant management during landing burns. Let's break down the core engineering challenge first. When Super Heavy comes screaming back toward the launch tower, it's already burned through most of its fuel during ascent and boost back. The main oxygen tank, which sits at the bottom and normally feeds all 33 Raptor engines, is nearly empty. Any remaining liquid oxygen is sloshing violently around inside. During those final critical seconds before tower catch, if the inner 13 engines try pulling from this chaotic, mostly empty tank, they risk fuel starvation. And starving even one engine during precision landing? That's a catastrophic failure waiting to happen. Here's where the spider tank becomes absolutely critical. This side-mounted structure stays completely full throughout the entire flight. While the main LOX tank empties during ascent, this reserve tank sits there untouched, waiting for its moment. When Super Heavy executes that final landing burn, the spider tank delivers clean, stable oxygen flow to those inner engines precisely when they need it most. No sloshing, no starvation risk, just reliable propellant supply during the highest stakes moment of flight. But the engineering gets even more fascinating. Thanks to RGV Aerial Photography's detailed shots of the disassembled sections, we can see how the propellant lines actually split at their base. Each of the inner 13 engines has dual oxygen feeds, one line pulling from the main tank, another from the spider tank. SpaceX installed valves that can switch between sources mid-flight. During ascent and most of the flight, those engines draw from the main tank alongside the outer 20 Raptors. Then, presumably after the boost back burn completes, the valves flip over to the spider tank, securing that oxygen supply all the way through landing. The spider structure itself